Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Secretary, we're on the same page um, that chronic absenteeism from school is a profound crisis for our kids. Our rates have increased from 15% pre-pandemic to 26% in 2023. And in our nation's highest poverty school, rates have increased from 19% to an alarming 32% in 2023. Something has shifted in our schools um, uh, with causes and explanations that, that are complex and, and sociological. And I'm not trying to plumb all those, no. uh, all those reasons. But at all levels of government, we have a responsibility to reverse <coughs> this unacceptable trend. President, uh, presently, two-thirds of states use chronic absenteeism as an official indicator for statewide improvement plans under the Elementary and Secondary Education Act. On the federal level, your department is responsible for monitoring states' evidence-based responses to the indicators in their plans. How satisfied are you with how states are implementing their chronic absenteeism plans? What would you like to start seeing from states in your department's next round of monitoring? Thank you for, for that question. I share, uh, as, as a lifelong educator, I share that concern. Mm. You know, chronic absenteeism, um, you know, you, you're not learning if you're not in the classroom uh, mm -hmm. with, your, with your peers. Uh, mm -hmm. So that is an issue that was exacerbated uh, after the pandemic for various reasons. Uh, and in our budget, we have proposals that will help address that. We've been very focused on ensuring that states are also um, what we call raising the bar, are, are really doubling down efforts on that, and we're seeing some good progress. But at, to answer your question, uh, we have a technical assistance center that we're focusing on uh, chronic absenteeism. So technical assistance, what's working, uh, you know, what's hap what, what are the best uh, strategies across the country? The technical centers are helping with that. I wrote to every state education chief uh, and asked them to take additional steps to address chronic absenteeism. We are monitoring the data uh, more at the Department of Education mm -hmm. regularly. Uh, we are working specifically with states where progress is being, uh, is not making as much progress mm -hmm. as other states, and we're gonna continue to do that. Uh, we're working closely with the White House as well to bring mm -hmm. in uh, educators and leaders who are having success with this mm -hmm. so that we can highlight best practices. In our budget, uh, we believe you know, the increase for full service community schools will, ha will make a big difference. I was recently in Pennsylvania mm -hmm. uh, speaking to parents in a parent center, and they were learning about how they could be equipped with tools to help other parents reduce chronic absenteeism. So, uh, you know, this is an area, as you said earlier, we have to yeah. focus on, and we all have a role to play at the Department of Education, increasing accountability, targeting support, and making sure we're listening to the best practices and sharing those are some of the strategies we're taking. Great. Thank you. And if there's any way in which you can share some of that information that's coming through with what the programs and plans are, that would be helpful to the, to the committee, do. I think. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Let, let me move to um, another issue. Last year, the department, your department, <clears throat> took action against Grand Canyon University, a predatory for-profit college, over the school's failure to accurately disclose its cost to students, driving up the true cost for those students, requiring them to pay for continuation courses before they would graduate. Scam courses added about $10,000 or more to the cost of education for these kids. The students settled a class action lawsuit against Walden University, another scam for profit, targeted women and black students with false advertising, misrepresenting how long it would take to complete their degrees. Um, this is far from being a few rotten apples in the bunch. Predatory for-profit colleges have engaged in a range of deceptions designed to increase enrollment student costs, uh, to drive more revenue for owners and shareholders. Beyond these individual actions, how are you and your agency committing to increased oversight of these institutions? And are there any way in which we can shut these, excuse me, can we shut these folks down? Mm. Thank you for that. If I could contextualize this for a second, um, in 2021, when I was uh, named secretary, the president made it very clear to me that we have a broken higher education system and we have mm -hmm. to fix it. Mm -hmm. um, that the system that we had uh, separated the haves and the have-nots, and there were a lot of practices there that uh, prevented students from accessing higher education or finishing higher education. Mm -hmm. So with that frame that there's a broken system, you know, we did multiple strategies. Um, borrower defense, which I'll get to in a second, debt discharge, uh, increasing PAL, uh, holding colleges more accountable, holding higher education uh, institutions more accountable. And this borrower defense 
going after those predatory schools that are preying on first generation students. You know, you have a, a, a shiny brochure and a great commercial, but the, the product is not worth the paper it's written on. We have students graduating $60,000, $70,000 in debt, uh, only eligible for jobs making under $30,000. That, to me, is unacceptable. Um, we've provided uh, $22 billion in, in debt discharge uh, for more than 1.3 million borrowers in that. We increased enforcement um, of our FSAs uh, through our office of uh, FSA to go after these folks and really crack down on these behaviors. We've levied the largest fine in uh, ed history against a school that lied to students um, about the cost and, and what it costs to get a degree. And uh, we've terminated um, a school from the, uh, the Title IV program as well. So we are cracking down on them, not only to shut them down, but to send the message across the country that you cannot prey on our students and expect to be successful. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, and I want to thank the chair for uh, indulgence with time. Thank you.